How many years does it take someone to become an apostle? That's a very good question. I, I would start off firstly with Jesus. That's when it, the title really came through him. And most times when he referred to his followers, who were apprentices, they were called disciples, a disciple was an apprentice. Then suddenly he started to, after much prayer, he chose from the group the 12 disciples who he called to become apostles so they weren't apostles yet they were apostles with him and they had to go through three three and a half years of training uh one one thing to notice is that they were with jesus for three and a half years um with no break so that works out to be in terms of hours um this answers off the i'm i'm just answering this off the cuff um, without warning, um, 30,000 hours, 36,000 hours, and that's a long time. And they were constantly with him without a break. They slept where he slept, they had breakfast with him, they had lunch, they were on long journeys, they prayed all night with him sometimes. So our relationship with the Lord for three and a half years we can't be an apostle in three and a half years once you enter ministry uh, because we need more time with the Lord. And our time is actually broken up into obviously sleep. Some people, ministers or preachers still work. Um, we study um, a lot of administration in the ministry that takes up five, six hours of your day. And you see the apostles of Jesus, they didn't get in, in, into any of that. They were just with Jesus at his feet, listening to him teach them personally, personal. So to have that personal time with the Lord, uh, even if you've been a Christian 10 years, or even in ministry, if you've been in ministry 10 years, I don't think that is enough time to be an apostle yet. Um, and I can prove, you just gotta take the hours. If you do it yourself, you know, the apostles were with him three and a half years, break up all the, you know, add up all the hours, then look at your life and see when you will actually catch up with the three and a half years nonstop, I call it. And it might work out to be like 15 years, 20 years. Have you been in the ministry before? You should even attempt or even dare to try to call yourself an apostle. Because the apostle has to carry his, um, like my hand, it's the five-fold ministry. So the apostle is like the thumb. So the, so the thumb can touch the, the fingers, all the fingers, one after the other. So the apostle has to have the ability, if a pastor is missing, that apostle can just be the pastor, he can just do it. If the teacher is missing, the apostle can teach just like the greatest teacher you can find. If the evangelist, there's no one there to get saved or preach to the lost, the apostle can preach to the lost with no problem. Yeah. If the prophet is missing, the apostle can step into that and prophesy and do. So the apostle has got to be able to do what the other four can do and have the combination of all of the other four ministry gifts, right? Pastor, you know, prophet, evangelist and teacher, also in him or her, yeah? And be able to switch at any time and have strength and no weakness across any of them. Once that person can do that, then they have been formed to be apostle. Now the apostle Paul, for example, started off as a convert like we all do. He went into evangelism really quick. Had to run for his life, had to throw him off the, the wall and the basket to hide him. Because uh, you know he hurt a lot of Christian people, so they didn't believe in him anyway. And then he was with Barnabas for some years. And they went evangelizing. Barnabas was the lead, he was the prophet, um, teacher. And uh, Paul was the teacher. After that, there was a switch and Barnabas could see, Barnabas could see that Paul 
had a new anointing on him and was becoming great. So Barnabas stepped back and allowed Paul to step up into the prophet, the was going to prophet level of ministry. And of course, they, they were definitely pastors because they could start churches, build churches. So that was there and definitely teach. But their time came after many years. And I think the number is after 14 years. I think 14 years, um, the Apostle Paul, although he started ministry, did not become an apostle until 14 years after very strong, powerful missionary ministry out there in the sticks. Frightening things happened because John Mark, who was called to work with Paul, went on one of the missionary journeys and came back and said, this is too much, it's too, look, it's too much, too much, probably too much demons, too much stuff. He said, I can't take this and he walked away from it. And so you, one's got to understand to be an apostle, uh, the, the, the title carries with it a lot of demonic attack. It carries a lot of evil power that will come against you to fight you and the ministry. So it's important that the apostle has been properly trained. And the last point of an apostle, and let me reiterate, it took Paul 14 years, 14, one, four years. And I don't think it should take us any less. And I, I really don't think so. And if you, you jumped into apostle title and you've got no signs and wonders, you can't cast out a demon or something like that, it's not right. You must, don't take the apostle the apostle title by faith and say it's coming it's coming yeah I, it's in it's in you know god has planned it for me so call yourself apostle now don't do that because you will now enter the arena of what it is in the apostolic yeah right so if i was to tell you what is in the apostolic i can just be anywhere any given time and things will start to happen around me and i mean demonic things witchcraft occult wizards and things like that i've, I've had to pray I've, I've been to hospitals to pray for people who were deep in the occult and i when i set these people free got them baptized in the hospital right there the occult leaders in different countries jumping on planes this is no lie this is no exaggeration jumping on aircraft coming to england to kill me to actually kill me physically kill me and it's because of the apostolic when they went on the aircraft, one particular case went on the aircraft, come in here to kill me, uses, got his big juju power, witchcraft, occult power, whatever you call it, to come here physically and kill me. Yeah, but because I'm, I'm an apostle, when they stood, we got on the plane to come here and kill me, guess what happened? The person dropped dead on the plane. He was the international, whatever you call him, the international bishop of witchcraft coming to England to kill me. And he couldn't kill me because God took his life because he was going to touch the Lord's anointed. You, you got to realize, don't take on the apostle. If you have stepped down, take the badge off for a while. Be what you are. If you're bishop or whatever you are, just be that. Amen. And I said only one of my teachers, for example, a bishop, an apostle can be a bishop and a bishop, can be an apostle right but the thing is not all bishops are apostles right so bishops are there for more of a management church structure system and keep everybody in its place and do a great structural bill for god and foundation up so you gotta understand that apostle you don't jump and take that badge please don't do it don't do it i didn't want it when it came it, you know but god knew it was time and uh, what what is the proof of the apostle when you read for the book of acts it says and the signs of an apostle were done and it all will always will have signs and wonders there will be some wonder things that are beyond belief that the apostle can do and so i could tell you some of those stories which i don't have time here i can tell you one for example i was in another country uh, i was in pakistan and the enemy was fighting the meeting the first night and my staff were going out. And, and so I told my staff and they, they just nodded. They said, they, you, know, they, you know, that time it's called Bishop. And they said, Bishop, we know, we know you got to stay in the hotel. So I got to stay here. And I was on my face before God in the hotel and I was speaking in tongues. 
and then suddenly in the sky, I heard a boom in the sky. Now, let me tell you something. There was no airplane. There was no uh, breaking of the barrier by aircraft. There was no aircraft in the sky. We didn't hear any aircraft. But there was a spiritual boom took place. And there were people fighting us from the, uh, from the, I don't want to say their names, but they were fighting the meeting and blocking it. And then God took my spirit out of my body and I flew in the air and I came over the top of a warehouse. And then at the warehouse, I could see through the warehouse, there were three men sitting around the chair and, I, and they were speaking in their language. I think it was Urdu and I came down. But when they spoke in Urdu, I got the interpretation. I understood in English every single word. They said, we are going to destroy the meeting of, of where I was preaching and we're going to put an end to this power that has come in they're going to destroy us but i stood there and i put my hand over them but they could not see me and i cursed their power and from that night the miracles just out broke in the church and all the other churches that we went about now that is the power of an apostle that's what we're talking about you've got to be able to do those sort of things before you put the badge on we got to honor god's gift we mustn't lighten the things that god is saying and i'm not telling you off either and you may be by faith you've had a prophecy on you but you got to wait and you got to go through like paul did in a way he went to Arabia for three years and he was prepared in the spirit. You have to see visions. You have to see the glory of God. You have to be taken some time to heaven. I've been taken to heaven two, twice, fully to heaven. And the third time I was taken to a heavenly place where Jesus met me and he gave me weapons of war. And you got to have those kind of experiences to step into an apostle. And you must know that. And that's what I'm just sharing. I've got to get a little bit excited about it. And so I'm just kind of cool down a bit right now but i want to encourage you all become apostles but you must pay the price you've got to pay the you have to pay the price you want to talk to someone to know what it's like uh this question has been put to me today but it'd be lovely to get my wife um you know prophetess winnie uh prophetess dr winnie mcleod to come and say and she'll tell you the price that i pay even my children could tell you the price that I have to pay to carry the apostolic and be an apostle of God. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.